Hey everybody, welcome to the Infrastructure SIG for uh, April, uh, starting on the first day of April. So, um, I am presenting. All right, just checking. Um, so, uh, first item, um, normally go, we go through uh, completed items to start. Uh, and then, uh, since the last Infrastructure SIG, we had put a new business item on there, uh, but I think it might actually fall into the completed item bucket before it was ever discussed as a new item. Um, but I will let uh, Evgeny tell me if that is accurate or if there are still things that we need to track completing uh, with regards to moving Catello's repositories to yumbeformant.org. Moving always implies that the old target is dead, which it isn't. So um, while you can now install Catello from yamdefoman.org, uh, the old Fedora people repository is still existent, and somebody would need to decide what should happen with it. Personally, I'll just uh, stop publishing to it and uh, keep it online because it doesn't cost us anything. And like the other possibility would migrate the old content also to yum the form and org and then kill Fedora people totally. Um, I prefer the one that I have less work with. Have all the Kato repositories uh, packages been updated in all the stri streams? No. So obviously, killing it would uh, on, only be possible like after uh, all, all the releases are EOL. Um, right now, Catello 4.0 ships with um, yum form and org as the repository URL and 3.17 and 3.18, while available on yum, the form and org still point to Fedora people. I think that's okay, but maybe we can update the readme of door people to say that's an old location and people should really, really be using Yum with the form of the org. Yeah. So at least move to a deprecation and then we can decide to remove all later on. Yeah. I, I don't have access to Fedora people. I tried. So Eric would need to do that. I can certainly do that. And I think four though is a nice point to start to move to the other form of the org and leave all three on the old location. That's also close to my reasoning. Yeah. That's my thought too. I don't see a reason to bring over all those old releases to yumlaforman.org. Um, is there any reason that we should add an equivalent type of note to yumlaforman.org that says, hey, if you're looking for old Catella releases less than four that go over the like go back over there? I mean, I don't really want users looking for all releases, but you know, I'm just, is it worth it to avoid the question? Given that 317 and 18 are actually available, I wouldn't. Could be interesting for people who look for historic releases, but clearly note that they're end of life and shouldn't be used anymore. But users who upgrade could run into it. And we, recommend you to always go one version at a time in upgrades. So it is something that they might look for. Um, is there anything 
Um, is there any reason to keep publishing nightlies to Fedora people at this point? For nightlies? Nope. So should we just turn it off now? If you turn it off, I would also remove the nightlies from Fedora people. Just having outdated RPMs is worse than uh, nothing them at all. Uh, I think the nicest trick here would be to keep the uh, Catello repos RPM there because it contains the new base URLs. So people would actually upgrade to the new URL transparently. Uh, as in like manually remove everything except for that RPM and then try and see if I can run create repo on it. Yeah. That way, anybody who has automation that does yum install Catillo repos latest will get the right repo without knowing it. Um, okay. Do We want to do the same for 4.0 if the goal intent is for 4.0 to be served from yumtheforman.org going forward. Is there any reason to keep it over on Fedora people? I think I say my promise to keep for OGA is there in my announcement post on this course. Okay. All right, any other comments or thoughts around in those repos? Yay. All right. Next up is ca.syntax.org limits with the testing matrix, testing matrix matrices um i guess let's start uh with you again at getting because i know you did you can just uh, give some updates on that work you did here to try to alleviate some of the issues we were seeing all right so uh what i did is i actually dug into the cicenters.org api and tried to understand what happens when we schedule too many jobs there and if we ignore the Ansible integration we have and just talk to the API, it actually gives you a nice error message saying you cannot schedule more than six machines in a five minute time frame. So um, I now have changed our jobs to retry to schedule the failed um, failed machines once after five minutes. And that seems to work. Uh, I think the latest 2.4 release was done without replaying stuff. So that works fine. It's still not, not the nicest solution. So I still would go and try to split up our things in nicer chunks, but at least now we don't have to do the whole replay game anymore. So it's um, less of an impending issue. Um, yeah. yeah. From that work, do you though, if we look at adding these other additional OSs that expand out the, the matrix, do you perceive that we'll 
effectively run into a new version of this problem again? At some point, um, yeah. I mean, if you look at the list um, that we have on uh, what we'll need, like uh, Ubuntu 20 and Debian 11 and a stream, those will be at least three new new jobs at some point. I think six new jobs. So yeah, that will g give us uh, headaches again if we ought add all of them. So yeah. Okay. Um, so with that, all that in mind, let's look at what we had as proposals and see if they're still valid. So we had the idea of splitting our release pipeline similar to nightly to help alleviate the problems we were running into. Do we still feel that is useful to undertake? Yeah, I think so. Because um, like most of the issues that we will face um, will happen on both OSs. So if we can run one OS and say that, OK, that one is failing, then we don't need to try the other one. OK. Um, what about reducing ourselves down to only a single Debian? That one always felt like we, we, we were trying to just work around and optimize for the, our ability to, the issues we were running into, but maybe wasn't always the best thing to do since it there could be differences. Yeah, um, I think that's, uh, falls into the same bucket as installing on CentOS 8 and saying we also work on CentOS Stream. Like it's close, but it's not the same. Um, running all installs first and then running upgrade jobs, so no parallel parallelization, just running installs then upgrades. Is that? That lengthens overall runtime, but we were trying to re reduce the amount of slots we were taking up. This is kind of mutually exclusive with number one, right? Because we either slot by target OS or we slot by installation type. And from my personal experience, having a way to compare install and upgrade runs is actually quite useful. Um, especially around Catello where we had uh, issues in the past with, for example, a fresh install would fail, but an upgrade did not fail. And that was a good indicator for saying like, or not, not not an indicator to saying where it, the, the issue is, but uh, locating the, the direction where you want to go. Like in, in the most recent case, it was as e Linux and upgrades would uh, benefit from, from the older installation. So you, you've seen that um, technically the code is fine, but something that's in the setup process is wrong. So the chain of DSL does have a throttle step, so you can throttle parallel steps. And that sounds like the best step forward there. Throttle as in like, tell it it can only run two parallel steps at any given time. Yeah, the documentation does suggest that. And if you scroll up, the global configuration does give you a total maximum concurrent builds. So it feels like this is actually something that could limit even cross jobs, which 
Feels like with a constraint trees or something that we are looking for. Yeah, I think we have some experience in the group of throttling a set of jobs. Uh, either by like node label or something like that to say like, you know, within these five jobs, only one or two can be running at a single time. Yeah, the only thing is that um, it appears that you need a plugin for it and we can't install plugins on central CI, but we could throttle on the foreign CI side. We could also ask for plugins. Plus, Technically, um, CentOS CI currently offers also to have an own Jenkins server if we want to. So instead of having an entry on their main setup, we could have one one own running on their, I think it's OpenShift or something, which would give us more control. Um, the last option or proposal part we had there was looking into other compute that we could either use instead of, or maybe I think, well, I think in parallel was never a fan of anyone, but uh, those two were the some IBM Cloud Resources and uh, Conova. Um, are there any updates around the playing around or uh, getting resources there? I have no update from Canova. I'll try to ping Bernd again. Um, I did get access to IBM Cloud, and um, they do offer, let's call it reasonably priced um, Cloud VMs that are capable of doing uh, virtualization, so we could just use those machines as um, target nodes for running Vagrant on. Um, I did not explore yet how well spin up and spin down works uh, with the API. They offer one, but um, so far I only used the, the UI. Um, so at least technically, that would be a possible target for running uh, Vagrant-based workloads also. So it was vert, on, it was vert on vert, but it worked. Yeah, yeah. The performance was also perfectly fine, I think like and Catello installation pipeline was something around 40, 45 minutes, which is absolutely comparable to what we have on CIS Institute or today. And just to be honest with you all, um, the machine I got was eight vCPUs, eight gigs of RAM, and it was something like uh, thirty-eight dollar cents for um, for an hour. Did you say eight gigs of RAM? Sixteen. Oh, sixteen. Yeah, eight CPUs, sixteen RAM. And I think 100 gigs of storage, but that's perfectly sufficient. Okay. So from this, it sounds like we need to explore that a little bit more and take on the whole splitting of release pipelines similar to Nightly. Yeah, and, and see what um, discounts we can get on IBM because I use my private account, which is not discounted at all. 
Um, and uh, remind me if we've said this before, do we, uh, did we feel like we needed to do at least do number one before we brought on board new OSs? Um, with the change that I did to do like waiting on the next available slot, I think we could add one OS without any pain. Um, two might be stretching it, three will be definitely too much. And also might not be very fair to the other users of CICentos.org if we block like a lot of their resources. Okay. All right. Uh, any other comments on that before I move on? From anyone? Hey, um, Koji running out of space. Uh, I had originally started on this and cleared some space, and I have not gone back to do the next step in the process. Um, and I, unless someone speaks up, I don't think anybody else has uh, either. Um, but. The original one had cleared a lot of space, so uh, that's why I hadn't really prioritized it. All right. Um, CentOS stream. So I did some work on that area. Um, I added it to forklift, so you can now at least spin up a simple stream uh, Nightly Foreman, which now passes. I actually found a bug in the process uh, that was fixed in Forecast in Linux. So that was actually a good example of why it was useful, because otherwise we would hit it with RHEL 8.4. Um, other than that, I haven't proceeded with adding it to pipelines because of the aforementioned problems. Sure. So, um, really, what well, I guess what it sounds like we'll need there is uh, to find some time to really have someone run and run different pipelines against stream, see what issues pop up, see if there are things we got to fix, see if there are bugs we need to file um, to work confident in adding them to run nightly on a consistent basis. Yeah, I haven't tried it with Catello just yet. That might also uncover other issues. Okay. Um, archiving old Debian releases. Did you? We had an archive date of March 8th. It has come and passed. Things have been archived. Um, so, as such, this is done. I think the only missing piece here is to add instructions how to archive new releases or other further releases. So um, for example, 2.4 is now out. So in theory, 2.0 could be also uh, archived. And um, 
But this is not part of any release checklist or anything. So that, that's what's missing essentially. Um, cool. Yeah, it'd be nice to check that one off next meeting if we could. Uh, auto building Debian on PR merge. I don't think that's done. Uh, and I don't think there's been any work started on it, right? Correct. Uh, Rackspace migrations, uh, not aware of any work that's been done in the past month on these. And I suspect with about four weeks till stabilization that these are not items that will pick up before the next infrasig either. So, uh, but I think next infrasig which will be just kind of after branching or right around then, we should talk about trying to prioritize them within our timeline, I think, because uh, it's a, a good time to, to do things um, while we're working on a, a you know, uh, getting a release out the door, planning it out, and prior to the next release cycle hitting three months later. Um, same with the red mine migration. I uh, don't know of any come any updates there. Um, are there any comments or work on the rebuilding Koji? Yes. Go for it. I've started building some Ansible roles to automatically de deploy Koji. Cool. Yeah, currently they're in my personal GitHub, but once I have a working state, I'll open up PR to have them reviewed and pushed into the foreman's code so we can have them available. Um, are there, when you were looking at that, did you look or see if, or find any existing uh, roles or anything that like maybe like the Fedora project or something had yeah, produced an old legacy role that's kind of outdated. So I'm kind of going through that and making sure stuff's still valid or if anything needs to be updated in that. Cool. Doesn't the CentOS project publish their Koji and Soul playbooks? I have not seen that one. If you have a link, I would love to see that. I can take a look for these uh, those devil archives. I think it'll be mentioned somewhere. And I think Fedora infrastructure has everything they do to manage their servers at Ansible somewhere as well. That might be worth getting inspiration from. You could also reach out to our Falcon RSC. Uh, he does love the info work and he can certainly guide you at least in the right direction. Definitely will pick that up. All right. Um, uh, uh, any updates on use of Jenkins file? I don't think so. Uh, I think Evgeny already gave us an update on uh, Canova. Uh, he's got follow up. Uh, CDN for the website, any updates on the RFS statistics? Nope. Um, yeah. And that one wasn't waiting on a discussion or outcome, it was just implementing this idea. 
Yeah, I think so. Um. Okay. Debian signing key needs extension. This happened. Um, Oops, that's not what I want. Um, yeah, build a plan, that's a good point. And also uh, document how to extend the key because um, I needed to follow up changes to be done until everybody agreed that the new key is the new key. Um, is that something, is uh, rotating the key, was that something we wanted to do for the 2.5 release or the 3.4 release? I don't think we specified a date or a release for what we really need to do this. Maybe a better way to phrase it is, so right now it's kind of like bot the very bottom of our infra priorities, but it feels like the kind of thing that I maybe should move up towards the top. So that we do it versus just continually extending. Yeah, I guess if you put it that way, 3.0 is probably a good release to rotate keys. Three O is what will come after two point five. I, I think that's pretty much yes. Yeah. Did that update this? All right. Rel for open source infrastructure. Um, I don't believe uh, has anyone done any further poking at this? I, I hadn't thought so. Uh, and then there was OSCI.OIO. Um, did anybody look more at that or have any further thoughts on that? I didn't. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, I didn't see any new business other than the moving Catella to Yum the former dot org. Uh, but since we're not at time, I will at least just ask if anybody's anything in anybody's head or something that they've encountered since the last meeting um, that struck them that's worth or needs discussion at an infrastructure level. All right. Well, uh, I thank everybody for their time uh, and their participation. Uh, we'll encourage trying to, uh, outside of this meeting, look back at the list of items there and think about where um, we can put them into our what we're working on or uh, where we can build time to uh, tackle them. Um, so that we benefit from the improvements, um, either improvements to the workflows that we deal with by updating these infrastructures, by doing these infrastructure projects, um, or uh, the problems that uh, tackling some of them will solve for things that we want to do uh, in the future. Um, I will post the meeting notes to the InfraSig topic on this course. Uh, 
Uh, and I will uh, end the recording there and bid you all adieu.